of all the things that are important to you, where would you rank safety? Kids don't think about it when they're playing. But if you have a family, you want them to be safe. You want to be safe while you're at home or when you're at work. responsibility and people who depend on us. In order to be safe and return home at the end of the day, important safety rules must be followed. <coughs> Lift truck operators are just like millions of other professionals who earn their living by operating equipment or vehicles. It takes skill, training, and experience. Realizing that no job on the ground or in the air can be done at the expense of safety. Remember, you're working on a piece of machinery that weighs about 9,000 pounds. With a load, it increases up to 14,000 pounds. That's equivalent to six cars. Lift truck operators have a difficult job. They lift heavy loads and they maneuver in tight spaces. Safety isn't something anyone sets out to ignore, but tight schedules, heavy equipment, pedestrian traffic, and congested workspace can compromise safety any hour, any minute, any time. Unfortunately, accidents can happen, but accidents happen more and cost more than we realize. Between lost time, increased insurance premiums, and litigation, it's common for accidents to cost a company over a million dollars. Some companies cannot survive the aftermath and close their doors permanently. Then there is personal injury. Let's not forget the family, especially the children. One accident can cost a child a lifetime of happy memories. But we can improve safety with the right training and the right rules. Government studies have shown effective training programs improve lift truck operator safety performance by as much as 70%. OSHA, the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, estimates that there are 68,000 accidents every year in the U.S. involving lift trucks. Of those, over 100 people are killed. Here's how the accidents break down in terms of causes. 25.3% tip over. 18.8% personnel are struck by a powered industrial truck. 14.4% personnel are struck by a falling load. 12.2% employee falls off elevated forks. 7% the lift truck runs off a loading dock or other surface and 6.1% the lift truck is improperly maintained. With numbers like these and the cost of accidents, it's no wonder that OSHA requires that employers give proper training to all their lift truck operators. It also states that only trained and authorized personnel can operate a specific piece of equipment. playing. This mother must think about load distribution and center of gravity just to keep this teeter-totter moving. A lift truck works much like a teeter-totter. The heavy counterweight on the back keeps the rear wheels on the ground. As you can see from this diagram, 
the front wheels act as a fulcrum between the counterweight and the load, just like the pivot point of a teeter-totter. It's the same principle of leverage that allows a young child to lift her mother. Now, let's look at loads. Every object has a center of gravity. These three loads are all the same weight, but because of their different shape, they have a different center of gravity or balance point. When a lift truck picks up a load, the center of gravity of the truck and the center of gravity of the load will produce the combined center of gravity. The combined center of gravity will move in the same direction that the load moves. A typical counterbalance lift truck has a three-point suspension system. The rear axle pivots at a single point in the center of the axle to compensate for uneven floors. This forms the stability triangle base. With the added dimensions of lift height, it forms a three-dimensional triangle similar to a pyramid. When the combined center of gravity stays within the triangle, the truck is stable. Move the center of gravity forward of the triangle, as when a load is too heavy or too high, the truck will tip forward. This is called longitudinal stability. Now, by truck must have a nameplate. This shows the maximum weight it is allowed to lift. This truck can lift 5,000 pounds, based on a load having a 24-inch load center. The load center is the distance from the face of the forks to the center of gravity of the load. In this example, this 5,000-pound truck with a 24-inch load center will attempt to lift this 5,000-pound load. However, because of the unusual shape of the load, the center of gravity of the load is 30 inches from the face of the forks. Notice how the rear wheels lift off the ground when the capacity of the truck is exceeded. Now, if the truck lifts the load from the opposite side, the center of gravity of the load is only 18 inches from the face of the forks. This load can now be safely lifted. The nameplate will also show the maximum lifting height. The higher the lift, the lower the capacity. Attachments such as this carton clamp actually reduce the capacity in two ways. First, the carton clamp moves the load away from the operator, reducing load capacity. Secondly, the weight of the clamp will further reduce load capacity. This 4,000-pound truck will now be rated or limited to lifting a load of 2,500 pounds or less. If a new mast is installed that changes the maximum lifting height, or if an attachment is changed or installed, a new nameplate must be requested and installed. Over one quarter of all lift truck fatalities occur when a lift truck tips over. Understanding the principle of lateral stability will reduce the chance of your truck falling sideways. What do you think? Is a lift truck more stable with a load or without a load while turning? As this lift truck turns with a load, the combined center of gravity moves towards the edge of the triangle. Now, notice what happens when we complete a similar turn, this time without a load. Notice the center of gravity is much closer to the edge of the triangle. The closer it is, the less it takes for the truck to become unbalanced and tip over. This is why an unloaded truck should be operated just as carefully while cornering. Let's look at some causes of tip-overs. Sharp turns, raised masts, unstable loads, potholes, uneven surfaces, wet surfaces, and driving on ramps, to name a few. On October 17, 1994, Scott was operating a lift truck outside. He was attempting to pick up a load of empty pallets. While making a sharp turn, he hit a small pothole.
Scott was fortunate. He had been properly trained. He knew how to best survive a tip-over situation. First of all, Scott was wearing a seat belt. When the lift truck tipped, he stayed inside the operator compartment, his best chance for survival. He braced his feet and held on tight to the steering wheel with both hands while leaning in the opposite direction of the fall. Scott was able to escape with minor injuries. Never attempt to jump out of your lift truck if you encounter a tip over. Had Scott tried to jump clear of the truck, the overhead guard would have struck him, crushing him to death. When a lift truck is in motion, the dynamic forces such as lifting, tilting, turning, and stopping can cause the combined center of gravity to move outside the stability triangle, causing the lift truck to tip over. When operating a class one stand-up lift truck, operators must be aware of the causes that result in a tip over situation. These are overloading, traveling with elevated loads, braking or accelerating sharply while turning, handling off-center loads, traveling at excessive speeds, falling from docks, dock plates, and trucks and trailers, to name a few. With a counterbalance lift truck, the operator is instructed to stay with the truck when it tips over. Stand-up lift trucks are different. In the event your stand-up lift truck is involved in a tip over or off the dock accident, you can be severely injured or killed. To minimize your risk of injury, it is recommended that you step off the rear of and away from your stand-up truck. Safety authorities such as OSHA state, when a stand-up rider tips over laterally, the operator must be trained to step off the vehicle toward the rear of the vehicle. In this example, the truck is turning a corner too fast with the load raised. As the truck begins to tip, the operator senses this emergency situation and steps out of the operator compartment. In this next situation, the truck is approaching the loading dock too quickly and slides on a wet surface. Unable to stop, the truck continues over the edge. The operator senses this emergency situation and steps out of the operator compartment. Use slow and gentle maneuvers when operating a lift truck. This will keep the combined center of gravity inside the stability triangle and all of your wheels on the ground. Keep your balance. Your life depends on it. When you put your life in the hands of professionals, you do not want them to cut corners. Pilots, for example, use a checklist to do a pre-flight inspection before every flight. 99 times out of 100, everything checks out okay. But it is the pre-flight inspection that contributes greatly to safe air travel. It's the operator's responsibility to inspect the lift truck before the beginning of each shift and keep a written record. At times, this task may seem unimportant. However, 6.1% of accidents are caused by improper maintenance procedures. The objective of the inspection is to look for damage and to make sure the truck is in safe operating condition and meets the manufacturer's specifications. A good place to begin an inspection is at the fuel source. In the case of an electric truck, start at the battery. With a propane truck, begin with the liquid propane cylinder. Make sure the locating pin is in place and the pressure relief valve is pointing upwards. Check the fuel level. Don't take a chance on running out where it is dangerous to refuel. Check the connectors and hoses. Then listen, smell, and look for leaks. Frosting will indicate even the smallest leak. Be careful. Touching this with your bare hands can cause a serious frost burn. Check the cylinder tie-down latches to make sure the propane cylinder is secure. 
open up the engine cover and inspect the engine compartment and fluid levels. Check the battery, the engine oil, transmission fluid, the fan belts and hoses. It's important that they are not frayed or worn. Check the brake fluid reservoir. Hydraulic oil level. The radiator coolant. And finally, inspect the air filter. A dirty filter can increase harmful or poisonous exhaust gases. Close the engine cover and secure the propane cylinder. Next, inspect the tires and wheels on the right side of the truck. Ensure the overhead guard is in good shape. Are the lug bolts present and tight to the touch? If not, call for repairs. Loose or missing lug bolts can cause damage to the truck or injure someone. Remember, do not operate the lift truck until repairs are made. Are there chunks of tire missing? cuts or objects embedded in the tires. How about wire, plastic strapping, string or foreign objects lodged in behind the wheel? These can cause costly damage or serious injury. If you're inspecting a truck with pneumatic tires, check the air pressure as outlined in the operator's manual. An underinflated tire will lean the truck to one side and will decrease stability. Notice that when the load is being lifted, it is actually moving away from the center of the truck. It wouldn't take too much to tip this truck over. Examine the mast and forks. The forks must be level. Look for excessive wear or cracks in the hanger welding or in the heel. The forks must be evenly spaced and the fork pins locked into place. Equal tension in the lift chains is important. This will prevent uneven lifting. Verify that the chain is well lubricated. Inspect the hydraulic tilt cylinders and lift cylinders. They must be free from leaking hydraulic fluid. Inspect the hoses around the mast. This is where leaks often start. Make sure the mast channel is free of foreign objects, such as pieces of wood or wire. Complete a thorough examination of the wheels and tires on the left side of the truck. To start the engine, make sure the parking brake is on. Listen for any unusual noises as the engine warms up. Pull the lift lever and fully raise and lower the forks to ensure free movement of the mast. Once the forks have been lowered, test the side shifter or any attachments if installed. Tilt the mast back and forth, making sure all hydraulic movements are smooth and operational. Release the parking brake and drive forward or reverse about 20 feet in total ensuring the steering and brakes are working properly. Check the brakes. The brake pedal must not reach the floorboard. If it does, the brakes are not functioning properly and the truck should be taken out of operation until repaired. When finished, Turn off the engine and apply the parking brake. Look under the truck to check for any oil leaks. Oil patches can cause serious injury to pedestrians. Next, inspect the horn, lights, and gauges. Observe pedestrian warnings and any other electrical systems your truck might have. 
A lift truck cannot be put into service until it has a legible manufacturer's nameplate securely fastened. Make sure the seat belt is not frayed or torn and that it latches properly. All safety labels and instructions must be in place and readable. The overhead guard and load backrest extension are important safety features. Make sure they are in place and secure. Finally, complete and file an operator checklist and report any defects to your supervisor in writing. If you're on the job and notice that your truck is unsafe to operate, park it and tag it out of operation. Report specific problems to your supervisor. Remember, Failure to do this could cause injury to yourself and to the employees working around you. of the road. If you decide to ignore them, you endanger your life and the lives of others. There are federal laws that have established rules for lift trucks. OSHA requires that you be trained and authorized by your employer to use a specific lift truck. Here's how the Industrial Truck Association has classified lift trucks. They fall into seven main categories. Class number one, electric motor rider trucks. Class two, electric motor narrow aisle trucks. Class three, electric motor hand trucks. Class four, internal combustion engine trucks, cushion tires only. Class five, internal combustion engine trucks, pneumatic tires only. Class six, electric and internal combustion engine tractors. And class seven, rough terrain forklift trucks. This video addresses only sit-down, counterbalance lift trucks, as described under classes 1, 4, and 5. Lift trucks are also designed to work in specialized areas. Underwriters Laboratories has designed specifications for lift trucks working in hazardous areas. A spark can be created by either an electrical system or internal combustion exhaust, causing flammable material to ignite. Make sure your truck is properly rated for the specific conditions of your job. Before anyone operates a lift truck, they must follow certain safety procedures. Proper safety equipment should always be worn. The wearing of safety equipment, such as safety shoes, is standard operating procedure. Many applications require hard hats, eye protection, or tethers to be worn. When entering the truck, Always use a three-point entry system and fasten your seat belt. Your specific application may require you to use additional safety equipment. Check with your supervisor. Lift trucks have similar controls as cars do. A steering wheel, accelerator pedal, foot brake, parking brake, and key switch. In addition, lift trucks have a directional control lever and hydraulic control levers. On most trucks, the first lever activates the lift and lower control of the forks and mast. The second activates the mast tilting action. The third works as an auxiliary function for an attachment such as a side shifter or a clamp. Remember, using attachments requires specialized training. 
Lift trucks need to be highly maneuverable to work in tight places. That's why they steer from the rear. Watch out for tail swing when traveling forward. When cornering, keep the front wheels close to the inside aisle and start turning. This allows room for the rear end to swing out in the opposite direction. Before you pick up a load, make sure your forks are spread as far apart as possible and are long enough to stabilize the load. And remember that the forks must be at least two-thirds of the length of the load to keep it balanced. If the load is over your lift truck's capacity, it must be broken down into smaller loads or use another truck with the proper capacity. While traveling, make accelerating, braking, and turning a smooth and fluid motion. This will minimize the chance of the load falling off the forks. Keep in mind that 14% of all fatalities involve someone being hit by a falling load. Loads must be stable before you move them. Never reach through the mass to reposition the box. Instead, get off the truck. Make sure the load is against the load backrest extension with the mast slightly tilted back. The pallet should be no more than four inches off the ground while traveling. On September 21st, 1995, a 31-year-old man was loading a trailer. A box fell off the top of a pallet and onto the floor. The operator put the truck in neutral and went to pick up the box. He did not engage the parking brake. pronounced dead at the scene, cause of death, suffocation. Bumps, rough or uneven surfaces and debris demand your full attention. These can upset your load or unbalance your lift truck. Drive with extra caution when in these environments. If you are carrying a large load that blocks your view, travel carefully in reverse. Use all of your field of view to guide yourself. Wet floors can be a real hazard. Braking and steering can become greatly reduced or non-existent. Drive slowly on wet surfaces. Before lifting, you should do a quick mental check to question things such as the weight of the load. Is the load stacked securely? And Will it fit in the rack? Remember, only raise the load when you have come to a complete stop and are in good position for the lift. Make sure the path is clear and tell anyone nearby to stand back because you will be lifting. Once the load is in position, tilt the mast so that the pallet is level and slowly lower the pallet until it rests on the rack.
when the forks are clear, lower them while remaining at a complete stop. Some operators think it's okay to lift and lower the load while they are traveling. Wrong. The lift truck must be completely stopped. Watch out for overhead hazards, such as sprinklers, heating systems, and low-hanging doorways. Electric trucks can also brake by changing the direction of the forward reverse control lever. This is called plugging. It's a common way to stop the truck, although the foot brake is quicker and more dependable. Remember to stay inside of the driver's compartment at all times. Do not place your hands or feet on or outside of the overhead guard. This is a bad habit that causes many serious injuries. When crossing railway tracks in a lift truck, angle your truck and proceed slowly. Cross the tracks one wheel at a time to stay in balance. Crossing railway tracks directly will make your truck unstable. All floors and elevators have weight restrictions. Remember to combine the weight of the truck and the load to determine the total weight. For travel on ramps, the load must always be uphill. So back down ramps with a load. and drive forward up a ramp with a load. If the load blocks your view, ask someone to direct you. Remember, never turn on an incline since the truck has a greater chance of tipping sideways. The forks must only be raised enough to clear the grade. When you are finished using the truck, park it in a designated area and remember to turn off the key. Never park in a fire lane or block a doorway. Lower the forks so that they are flat on the ground. Put the controls in neutral with the parking brake on. Turn off the valve on the propane cylinder to prevent a fuel leak. Disconnect the battery connectors if using an electric power truck. Loading docks are busy places for pedestrians and equipment. On average, a lift truck may pass over a dock 100,000 times per year, so there are plenty of chances for accidents. Statistics show that over 7% of accidents happen in the loading dock area. If the area between the trailer and the dock is not safely secured for any reason, the lift truck can fall through the gap, causing injury or death. A common cause of trailer separation accidents is early departure. This is where a tractor-trailer driver assumes loading or unloading is complete and pulls away from the dock while the lift truck is entering or leaving the trailer. If the lift truck does not have enough time to stop, it can fall off the dock or trailer. Even if wheel chocks are still in place, they offer little protection if the tractor-trailer driver leaves before it is safe. Landing gear collapse is another safety hazard. When the tractor has been removed from the trailer, certain safety precautions must be taken. If the landing gear is weak or corroded, it may collapse due to the weight and forward motion of the forklift entering the trailer. Trailer upending is another hazard caused by the heavy loads being placed in the nose of the trailer that exceeds the counterbalance effect of the trailer's rear axle. Therefore, uncoupled trailers must be secured with a support jack before entering with a lift truck. The most common form of trailer separation 
is trailer creep. As the lift truck travels on and off the trailer, its momentum inches the trailer away from the dock. To demonstrate this, the wheel chocks have been removed and the brakes released from this tractor trailer. As this moving lift truck stops, its weight forces the entire rig to move away from the dock. This is why the tractor trailer must be safely secured against the dock. Tractor trailer brakes must be engaged and wheel chocks must be properly installed. However, wheel chocks have their limitations and could fail if placed on ice, gravel, or sand. For increased protection against these types of accidents, many companies have installed vehicle restraints that either hold the trailer firmly against the dock by engaging the trailer's ICC bar or by locking the trailer rear wheels with dual steel barriers. Lift truck operators are responsible to ensure the trailer is ready for safe loading or unloading. Once the tractor trailer is secure, carefully position the dock leveler in place. Make sure there is proper lighting. Poor lighting increases the chance for injury and or product damage. The floor of the trailer must be inspected to ensure it is in good condition. And the combined weight of the lift truck and load do not exceed the maximum weight capacity of the trailer. When backing out, stop at the end of the trailer and look both ways for pedestrians. Accidents on the dock happen every day. By knowing the safety hazards in this area, you can make the loading dock area a safe place to work. Pedestrians are involved in about 40% of all lift truck accidents. 18% of them are fatal. On August 8, 1993, a man was taking inventory in a warehouse. A lift truck carrying a load of boxed metal parts was stacking a load. While backing out, his forks caught the pallet and it fell. Keep pedestrians well away from the lift truck at all times. When traveling, it may be difficult for you to see through the mast and or around the load. Pedestrians may not hear you due to the noise or because they are concentrating on their job. Always follow common sense safety rules to prevent pedestrian accidents. Make sure before you move your truck, the path is clear of anyone or anything. Slow down when approaching blind corners. Use your horn. Stop at intersections always giving pedestrians the right of way. Use aisleway mirrors to make sure the path is clear. Look behind you before backing up. And don't rely on lift truck mirrors. You can see much more by turning to look. Often pedestrians will ask for a ride. Lift trucks are strictly designed for one person, the operator. No riders ever. Never lift a person using a lift truck while they are standing on the forks or a pallet. Twelve percent of fatalities related to lift trucks involve someone using a lift truck as an elevator. These are just a few of the many safety rules that must be obeyed to ensure a safe workplace. However, every place needs their own set of special safety rules. Your employer should have his own list. Practice driving safely, because safety is no accident.
Liquid propane gas is a popular fuel for many uses. When handled properly, it's safe. When handled improperly, it can cause serious injury or death. Don't let this happen to you. Liquid propane gas is a liquid that normally boils at minus 44 degrees Fahrenheit. But when stored in a high pressure cylinder and compressed 270 times, it stays liquid at room temperature. If released, the expanding gas can cause a serious frost burn when it comes in contact with unprotected skin. For this reason, eye protection and heavy gloves should always be used when handling liquid propane gas. Liquid propane gas is heavier than air and will travel along the ground like water. Escaping liquid propane gas can be extremely dangerous if it is allowed to move to a low area where it can collect and ignite. Here's how to minimize the chance of liquid propane gas from leaking while changing the cylinder. These procedures must be followed. Start by parking the lift truck. Set the parking brake. Lower the forks. Place the transmission in neutral and leave the motor running. Put on your protective safety gear. Then, turn off the valve on the liquid propane gas cylinder and allow the truck to stall due to lack of fuel. This reduces the pressure of the gas in the fuel lines. Next, turn off the ignition and then try to restart the motor. If the truck will not start, you may proceed. First, uncouple the hose from the valve. Remove the cylinder and store it outside in a safe and approved method. When installing the full liquid propane gas cylinder, handle it with care. The liquid propane gas is under high pressure. Check the new cylinder for proper seals and gaskets. Don't risk leaks with a bad O-ring. Now, place the cylinder on the locating pin and set it in the liquid propane gas tank bracket. Remember, the pressure relief valve always points upwards. Secure the cylinder with the bracket restraints. Open the valve slowly. Look, listen, and smell for leaks. Frost on a fitting is a sure sign of a dangerous leak. Ensure that the cylinder is secure. Now you're ready to go. For diesel or gasoline refueling, drive the lift truck close to the pump and turn off the truck. Open the gas cap and feed the nozzle into the tank opening. Turn on the pump and proceed to fill the tank. Do not fill the tank completely. This will minimize the chance of fuel spilling out while driving. When finished, replace the cap and clean up any overspill with a cloth. Finally, start your truck and proceed with your work in a safe manner.
In many ways, industrial batteries are like young infants. They need to be changed and cleaned regularly. If they become too tired, they start to act up. They constantly need to be replenished with water. But given too much, they'll spit up all over. If you take care of your battery, it will last for many years. Ignore it, and you will have problems. The typical industrial battery is really a series of individual cells joined together by lead connectors. Each cell has a positive post and a negative post. The cell is filled with a solution of sulfuric acid and water called electrolyte. Each cell generates approximately two volts of electricity. When it's time to recharge the battery, park the lift truck with the emergency brake on. It is best to recharge the battery when it's out of the truck. But if that's not possible, fully open the battery compartment to allow heat and hydrogen gas to escape. Hydrogen is a highly flammable gas, and for this reason, batteries must only be charged in well-ventilated areas. No smoking or open flames are permitted. Unplug the battery connector from the truck and attach the charger connector to the battery, never to the truck. Check the cables for wear and the connectors for damage. Turn on the charger following the manufacturer's instructions. When the charging process is complete, always turn the charger off before unplugging the connectors. In March of 1995, a newly trained operator was testing the electrolyte with a hydrometer. He was not wearing any face protection. He squeezed the hydrometer too hard. This caused the electrolyte to spray up on his face. He immediately went to an eye wash station. Luckily, he was trained on what to do if he came in contact with acid and suffered no injuries. You should always wear protective equipment when you're anywhere near battery acid. Gloves, goggles, and a body shield are mandatory. Have an eye wash station nearby. If acid gets into your eyes, go immediately to the eye wash station and run water over the affected area. Then, get medical attention. After charging, remove the caps of three or four cells to determine the electrolyte level. Only a flashlight can be used to look into the cells. When the battery is fully charged, the electrolyte has a high acid content. This can be tested with a hydrometer. By testing a small sample of electrolyte, you can determine how much energy is in a cell. This will also locate bad cells in a battery. A full reading should be around 1.280. As the battery is discharged, the acid level becomes weaker. A discharged battery will read approximately 1.1620 on the hydrometer. Take hydrometer readings of the cells and record the findings. Look for large differences between cells and report any unusual findings. To avoid acid spills, only add water after charging. Adding too much water before charging will cause overflow during charging and create a hazardous spill. If electrolyte does escape, it must be neutralized with baking soda and water. Many people use a crane to remove the battery from a lift truck for maintenance. Carefully attach an approved insulated lifting beam to the battery and lift it out.
place it near the charger, then pick up the freshly charged battery. Be careful, the battery weighs thousands of pounds and can crush your hands or feet. Use only equipment designed for this purpose. Electric trucks depend on the battery to balance their loads. Use a battery that is the proper weight and voltage. Check the lift truck's nameplate and compare it with the battery's weight and voltage as marked on the battery casing. Join the connectors and close the cover. Some trucks use battery slides. Remove the safety gate and roll the battery out of the truck. In order to align the fresh battery to the battery compartment, connect extension cables. Then, drive the truck into position. Remove the extension cables and roll the fresh battery into the truck. Replace the safety gate and then connect the battery cables. Here are 10 tips on how to get the most out of your battery. Follow the manufacturer's instructions. The life of a battery and your lift truck controls can be severely shortened by not following the manufacturer's instructions on charging and maintaining the battery. Inspect the connectors. A loose, cracked, or pitted connection can cause arcing or sparking. Don't use the connector as a switch. Always shut off the charger when connecting or disconnecting the battery. Add water after charging. Charging increases the electrolyte levels in cells and can cause overflowing. Overflowing means a loss of electrolyte and damages your truck. Keep it clean. Batteries and their compartments should be kept clean and dry. If electrolyte is spilled on top of the battery, neutralize it immediately with a solution of baking soda and water. Always wear a face mask or goggles, rubber gloves, and a rubber apron when cleaning batteries. Don't lay tools on top of the battery. Battery gases are explosive. Keep vent caps in place. Vent caps allow gas to escape and keep foreign objects from falling into the cell. Remove vent caps only to add water or to take hydrometer readings. Keep your battery cool. A normal charge can increase the temperature of a battery by 15 degrees or more. Operating hot batteries shortens their overall life. Allow the battery to cool down at least the same length of time that it was charged. Don't overcharge. No amount of overcharging can increase battery capacity, and it substantially shortens battery life. No smoking, sparks, or open flames in the area. Charge in a well-ventilated room. If electrolyte gets in contact with your skin or eyes, rinse thoroughly with water for at least 10 minutes and get immediate medical attention. Safe operation of a lift truck is knowing your equipment and following the rules of the road daily. Take pride in knowing that your performance affects you and your fellow workers. Your biggest job is ending your workday safely and returning to your family and friends. It's hard to play the game when you're injured. 
So learn to do your best so we can all get home 